there. It's February, and I'm back again with more of our story that's unfolding. And I first want to say that many, many people around the planet celebrate February as the month of the heart, a month when love can flow, that we take a moment to appreciate our relationships with each other, and hopefully with this Mother Earth as well. <laughs> so let the love flow and wrap yourself up in it just a bit as well. So as I was leaving you with the report last month, we were getting ready to go to Kauai. And we were going there for two purposes. One, I remind you that the fountain for natural order of our existence has just become its own uh, not-for-profit. And so we were gonna be meeting with our board, what we call our mission circle, uh, at the first part of our journey to Kauai. And then we were gonna open the door to what we were calling Creator's Lab. And Creator's Lab means that 20 of our collaborating partners uh, jumped off with us into this moment of deep listening, a moment to follow the mystery and to leave our minds still so our hearts could listen deeply and catch some of the instruction of what the Mother Earth herself is calling for. For the way that we've been catching this for some time now, and through the ecosystem of our sacred economic summit, um, where many partners gathered with us to begin to dream into what does it mean, sacred economics? How do we bring that understanding from some of the old teachings of our ancestors to restore a a platform, uh, our foundations for life based on the original principles. And those original principles are heart, unity, um, collaboration, passion, tolerance, all life is sacred. Um, all of these are part of the original principles. And they're not principles that can be only a cognitive concept, they have to drop down and we have to embody these principles inside of ourselves. And once we do that, then those principles living inside of us start to unlock themselves and they reveal uh, instruction that helps us remember how to come back to a way of life following the instruction of those original principles. So we have partners that we're ready to embrace the mystery this way, that we're ready to let go of their own expectations, what they might get out of this training. For you see, we were really, for the first step towards it, we wanted to remove ourselves out of this extractive kind of attitude towards life to one that sits with life as part of life and starts to listen how we can emerge together into this new dawn that the prophecies have been telling us about for so long. So we had 20 of our, our collaborating partners that were willing to come in this way uh, to the creator's lab held there in Kauai. And um, Tutu, who is one of the um, delegates of the Mother Earth delegation, um, was the elder that would receive us onto her territory following those original principles and protocols. So our first day into the creator's lab, when we turned that lab on and opened it to ourselves, we were instructed by the teachings of the Hawaiian islands, by these beautiful ancestral um, teachings of the Hawaiian peoples. They brought their teachers there to share with us they opened a kava ceremony, which they preferred to call an ava ceremony. Um, and they brought the understanding of the hula teachings and how they hold a knowledge for the peoples there to be carried and passed on um, to their youth. Um, we had from that space, uh, we then moved into the next morning, which would be guided by Alexis Bunton, who is Yupik um, and is also part of the Mother Earth delegation. She works closely with pioneers, and she also has done um, consultant work for over 20 years, and she has designed 
uh, a decolonization training. And so we opened ourselves to that level of self-investigation, if you will. Um, and through her guidance and instruction, we began to realize some of those places that these belief systems that were colonizing systems and locked us into a state of slumber, if you will, kept us from a state of being fully awake and aligned with the Mother Earth and what she's needing in order for all of life to prosper and be sustainable. Um, she helped us look at just a little bit of how that might happen and what we must do in order to uh, investigate and transform those understandings to restore ourselves to an original way of being. It was so successful, all our partners <laughs> embraced it with all of their hearts and really wanted more and deeper, deeper learning. And so we're in the middle of now of um, crafting a partnership, if you will, um, with Alexis so that she can provide deeper understanding and training with the decolonization um, acts that we need to, our steps that we need to take in order to unpack ourselves and to restore ourselves to an original way of being. Um, she's designing a nine-week program with us right now that we'll soon be able to offer some of you uh, and some of, of your companies or some of your organizations, however that might fit for your life in the way that you're working for this planet herself. Um, we She brought also a, a young Mayan uh, woman that was from the main island in order to run a cacao ceremony for us, which was beautifully done. And so as you can see, we had a sacred fire going throughout this time and um, that helped ground us and helped to inform us and instruct us a place where we could come and pray and let go of things that we were discovering in ourselves that we no longer needed. Um, and the ceremony um, really acknowledged that what we're doing is sacred work and it's helping us come back to life as all sacred. Um, from this point, uh, then we moved into listening to Mindaha Beseta, who gave us the teachings of the original principles of the Atomic Toltec peoples, and then Milo Yellowhair, who brought the Oguala Sioux original um, teachings through story and demonstration of how these original teachings help um, carve out a good life, a good way of life that benefits all. Um, so it was very full. And as I mentioned before, we were really working to see how to move out of our minds and to embody the understanding of, the, of these principles. And it opened something in us that was quite inspiring. And so on the last day that we were together, all of our partners began to pull the golden nuggets, those things that they felt really opened something for a deeper study in themselves. Those things that really opened and shined a light and um, brought an awareness to something they had been unconscious with before. Um, those things that they felt they could dive deeper into and the teaching and the learnings would help them craft things differently in the work that they were offering to the planet. So it was a very, very rich experience. And everybody that was there, all the partners wanted to go forward. They wanted to commit themselves to what we were beginning to open to. And so we're meeting starting this week. Every two weeks, we have working circles that have come out of that and will do their work and then bring it back to the circle with the idea being that we want to see what are the steps, what are some of the ingredients of a toolkit that we can offer to other businesses and organizations and movements that will help to restore these original principles in a way of life um, that brings more balance, kindness, and care for all of life. So that's where we're at with this. Uh, we all left inspired, humbled, and um, hearts wide open, hearts wide open and ready, really ready to take the next steps forward together, unified in this purpose that Mother Earth has called us to hold. So we'll see what that toolbox is going to bring. Uh, and I can share that with you hopefully more in next month's newsletter. In the last part of this story today, I wanna say too that, you know, I'm, I, we talked about the fountain had 
uh, got had just received its not for profit um, status. And so what I like to think about is like we have a village of almost four decades that's been growing all these different transformative tools that help to open people, help to heal people and help to generate and inspire uh, that alignment process that you hear me talk about so much. Um, so that how that new building in our global village <laughs> is going to be lighting itself up and it's going to start offering things to you, to our community that will help you in the work that you're carrying and that thread of possibility that is part of the weaving of this new dawn going forward. So we're looking to host webinars that will maybe bring some of these teachings to you. We're looking to see if the work that Alexis Bunton is doing is an interest to you and you'd like to know more. Um, so just stay tuned because these kind of developments are, 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 are happening right now, even as I, I'm speaking with you. Um, so hopefully next month uh, we'll be able to join in some celebration and share some of the new ideas that are beginning to flow. Until that time, you have a blessed, blessed day. And know you are so loved by this universe and so significant in the weaving of a new dawn. Have a blessed day. Mm -hmm.